Let me just tie in with what Bob have just said. Uh, uh, after, you know, coming back to Mississippi in 1960, spending 12 years at Menon Hall, uh, working with the young people there, and seeing that young indigenous leadership develop there, and one of the thrills of my life that uh, Carrie Ann Turner is sitting over there was a little old bit of girl when we went to Menden Hall. And of course, over here is all in there. I better stop calling people names. But the idea that she went off to college and university and, and all of that, and she's come back and got her PhD and is living back there and is director of the little school that we started uh, there at Menden Hall. Uh, the same thing is happening in Pasadena that we start a little school there. And what I got on my mind tonight is, is how do we tie into what God has blessed us with in terms of CCDA and this whole philosophy of Christian community development? And how do we pass that on to the next generation? And how do we pass it on with a sense of, of excellence, you know, to this next generation? And we, I raise questions as whether or not the public school can do it alone. And I'm not against the public school because 95% or more of our children is going to be in the public school. But we can't leave education and development of our own children by chance. We need to be there now developing those kids with some virtue, with some spirituality, with some commitment. And that we need these Christian schools in these neighborhoods and that we need to be developing the teachers who are going to be the teachers for the people in the public school, who are going to be the superintendents, who are going to be the coaches in those public schools. We can't leave that to chance. And so why we got to develop that. And so that's what I'm thinking about in my mind. How do we pass this on? And then after being in Mississippi for 22 years, I went back to my home in California, went back there to my friends there who had nurtured me and who had supported me as a missionary for 22 years. I went back to thank them for supporting me and Vera May and I then began to think about what's going to be our next step in life. Uh, we didn't need very much because we had established pretty neat value and God has been very good to us in giving us these lifelong friends who believed in what we was doing. And, and so we, I began to talk to these friends and we began to have retreats. And we began to think about what should we do and out of that came this idea that how we could pass on this vision of Christian community development, if we could form some kind of an association where these people could come together and that they could begin to build this vision and share it all over the United States. And you're the results of that. But as we begin to talk about it, my friends begin to say, how should we do this? Well, some of these friends of mine were very, very wealthy. Uh, and, and they had supported us all down through the years. And they said, well, what we should do is that we should, we should uh, uh, create a foundation, and we did that. And that, of course, they called it the John Perkins Foundation. And, and we should put into this foundation five or six million dollars a year, and we should use that in terms of developing people. I said, no, you don't start with money to develop people. Money makes them more dependent. And I would be looked upon not as somebody come to encourage them, but I'd be looked upon somebody who is coming to give out money. And so we begin to think about it. And so we th decided that we would organize this C Christian Community Development uh, Association. And this has come into being. And what I decided to do then, instead of these people giving me the money, what I would do is go out and make these friends and, and tell these friends in these cities where these ministries were developing to get involved in those ministries. Get involved and use your resources there and develop the community. So in the last 12 years or so, that's what I've been doing. I've been going into cities, going into your cities and other cities, organizing the people in those communities and helping them to not give the money to us, but invest the money in their own neighborhood, in their own community. And so we've done that for, for, for some time. 
And then we decided on, I always said when I got to be 65, I wanted to stop doing all of this, some of all this stuff. And I, and I wanted to come back to home, Mississippi. And of course, Spencer and Chris and all of them there, they was um, working in the Christian Community Development Movement, and they was writing books and do, doing magazines, and they was editing my books and really writing them. I was putting my name on them. And, uh, and, uh, and they was putting that together. And so my job then was to come back, and they had this idea of building a training center. A center where, young, where mission groups, where our groups could come. And we could really think and be together and learn from each other in small groups. We would still have our workshops. We would still have our convention. But the leaders would come there, and they could strategize, and they could plan, and, and, and it'd be a retreat center. It would be a youth center. Not only would we do that with older people, but we would do it with our young people. And so Spencer and them had this vision. They were going to do that. They had uh, bought seven acres of land. Well, I thought they had six acres of land. And when Vera and I went back there in 19 and, uh, in 96, we bought some other land to join with that, bought us a house. And, and our job then was to really, I wanted to be there just to be the encourager and continue to go out in the community to your ministry and speak at your banquets, do things, meet these investors and get these people to invest in the local neighborhoods and community. That was my, that was my time to do. And then of course, uh, two years ago, I had to, we had everything going. I mean, my life was just so wonderful. My grandchildren would come every day down to our house to see us. And then all at once, Spencer died of a heart attack. The dream came to an end. We didn't know what we was going to do. I mean, we was heartbroken. And then uh, they put the property up for sale, and our dream was gone. Not only that, but uh, Nancy took the uh, uh, three kids, which she ought to have done, back to her home, because she came from a big family. And she took the kids back there where they could be nurtured in, in their family. And so here was Vimmy and I left there, then bought our big house, then built it, and then got these people from Iowa to come down there and fix it up and build rooms and kitchens outside and all this kind of stuff. We had a place there that was fit for a king to live in. But now, Vera May would come out and say, where's my grandkids? I won't hear Spencer's voice anymore. We would just didn't know what to do. We was almost like shut up in this place not knowing what to do the next step was going to be. Then one night, I had this, it, like it was a dream, a real dream. And I had this dream, because I, every time I would think of buying this property, we could buy the property, uh, but, but I said, I'm too old. I'm 68 years old at that time. I'm 70 now. I said, if I buy this property, I'm too old to do that. And so every scenario I'd run through my mind, I would say I shouldn't do it. And then this night, I got this dream. It was a real dream. And the dream was that here was all of these CCDA people was coming down there, uh, builders, contractors, just regular people coming, youth group, and they were outside in this dream. And they wanted to come, and they were saying, we came to help you develop this center. And I it was so strong, that I jumped out of bed that night. And I ran, to, I thought they was out there. And I ran to the door to, 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 to open it, to, to, to let them in. But when I got to the one and left the door, it, it was 3 o'clock in the morning. And I went back to my, went back. And because I jumped out of bed so fast, it woke me up. And when I got back there, I said, honey, let's buy this center. Let's buy this center. And it was shocked me because it always shocked me. Virma is one that never say yes too easy. I mean, it takes me a long time for me to say. But she said, yes, let's do it. But then she asked me the question I didn't want to hear. She says, uh, where are we going to get the money? <laughs> and I 
said, well, honey, I said, what happened is, you know, when, when I had all these children and we was when we were growing them, some friend of mine say, uh, you know, suppose you die and leave Vera Mae with all these children, you need an insurance policy that, so if you, something happened to you, that Vera Mae will have enough money to help carry the kids on. So they bought one of these kind of insurance policies that you get a lot of money if I die, but if I live a long time, I don't get much. Well, I, I, uh, I, I, and so I had lived a long time with this policy, and what you get when you live a long time with it, you just get what you got in it. And I said, honey, uh, we, let's take this money out. And I don't already live past retirement. I said, let's take this money out and let's buy it. Also, what we had done is we had uh, already saved some CDs. You know, we was every year I would buy a CD for Veerman, a CD for us, and been doing that for about 20 years. And so we had all that money. I said, let's sell these CDs. We don't need them, and let's pay. Let's pay for this property. So we bought the property, and then uh, we began to develop it. And groups have begun to come, and it's something beautiful happening there in Jackson. You know, and then the people began talking about, I got these architects like, just like uh, uh, he was talking about here and these fellas, and they said, to build this is gonna cost us about uh, $2 million to do what you want done there. And uh, I said, well, I don't wanna spend the last part of my life just raising money. I would rather be out there raising money for the grassroots people. I'd be out there rather stimulating people to put their money into the neighborhoods where people are aching and in pain at in the community. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to encourage my friends to gather together work groups to come down and help us build this center. And that's what people are doing. And what is happening is, and another, some of my other friends are giving us enough money to buy the materials, and some of the people are bringing money with them to buy the materials, and we are ready to develop this center. We want, we're gonna pass on this vision uh, to the next generation. We're building this retreat center, we're building this study center, and we're gonna pass this vision on to the next generation. And you know, and so I expect you, you folks to come down and help us now what we decided to do was, and I said then, well, if I'm gonna spend the rest of my last few years just building this center and all, because that ain't what I, what I really like to do is to study the Bible, get up in the morning and read the Bible, and study the Bible, and read all of my commentaries and stuff like that, and teach the Bible, that's what I like to do. And so we began to say then, why don't we do this then? When these young folks come down, and these adults come down, why don't we spend half of the time, some of the time, working on the building? And in the morning and in the evening, why don't we spend the time studying the Bible together? And we're doing that. And what a joy we're having. So we're encouraging you folks. So it's more than just coming to help us build. You're going to do that. We're going to make the place beautiful. We want to make it absolutely beautiful. One of the things now that we're doing now, we build this chapel the Spencer Perkins Outdoor Chapel, and it is absolutely beautiful. And we got these beautiful plaques inside of it. And now what we're doing now is we're taking with the groups that come down and help us to build the place. We are getting bricks and putting their names of the groups in those bricks. And we are sort of making a sort of a Spencer Perkins Memorial Plaza. But it's also showing the friends who've come along. And the days going by, going by people are going to come along there and they're going to see that there was people like you, people who was committed to spreading this vision. And see, we want this place to be the place that you can come and renew your spirit. Renew your spirit and see that there are people, and all of us together have developed this. Thing. And so we invite you to come and, and to, to be a part of that. Call us down there, make your reservation, bring your young people down there, and then we go on a tour. We take you to Menin Hall. We show you what's going on in Menin Hall. We take you out to the Voice of Calvary, that's the other ministry there, show you what they're doing there, and what other ministry that have copied after our ministry there in Mississippi, what they're doing. But the biggest thing, we're gonna develop this center. I mean, we, so we invite you to come. Now I read this poem, this is my poem, and, uh, and this will be my closing this evening. So this is not a long talk, you're gonna get homework. But this, this poem, 
really depicts uh, my vision. And so I want you to listen to it. I'm now 70. I wish God would give me how many years he would give me. But these years, I want to spend the remaining of them. I want to stop traveling so much. I want to be able to work at the center. You come down. The young leaders, we want young leaders. Get your group together. Bring down seven, eight people and stay a week. And let's do some planning. Let's do strategic planning about what your ministry is going to be like. And so we can be then, we'll have professors and other people there that help us in our development, help us in our, in our planning. One of the things that we're doing now is in Jackson, we are gathering together now young, the young people who grew up in our ministry, who are starting their own business enterprise in the community. We want to bring them back. Every month we want to have a luncheon for them. And then we're going to get other people in the community. And so we're going to be sharing this vision, passing this vision on to the next generation. Bob Lupton is saying here, we have learned how to do some things. We've got people within our ministry now have gained skills. We've had 12, 15, or 20 years now in this development. Uh, as I always said in one of my little, on my letters, uh, we know the problem. We know the problem. Uh, we have a solution, but we need each other to carry it on. But we need to anchor this in the next generation. And, uh, we, got, we need to teach the next generation how to do it. And that's what this training center is about. It's about passing it on to the next generation. So listen to this little poem here, and I'll be finished tonight. The title of this poem, and we don't know where this poem came from, uh, it's, listen at it though, it's called the Bridge Builder. And that's what we got to do now. That's what we got to do. All of us got to do together. We've got to build a bridge now for the next generation. But we have learned and we are learning how to do it. We, as you hear it, Bob Lepton, there is a possibility of the resources. And, and the people with the resources, a lot of them is coming to me. I'm talking to them. Like this young man came to us to here who had these resources, very large amount of resources. He wants to invest those resources in neighborhood development, community development. And so uh, the, what he want to do, I, I don't need the money for that. I want to find the ministries within CCDA and allow them to invest those resources in those different ministries within, within, the, within the community. That's what I want to keep on doing that. Keep on doing. You know, really, because I, you know, I can have some influence with these guys, because I'm not that begging them for nothing. I'm not challenging them. I'm telling them they need to give their money away. They need to do justice. I don't need your money. But there are people in the neighborhood. There are folks in your hometown. There's the poor. There's the people with AIDS. We need to do something about these prisons. We need to do that. Let's invest in that. And we got experience of that in Pasadena. Because when I went to Pasadena, uh, and, and my, my friend, we began to see the problem there. And I began to say to people like Steve Lazier and them, let's start a house for these homeless people. And these guys began to put up the money to do it. And we're doing that around the country. We're challenging people around the country. Go into your hometown. You made your money here. You ought to be grateful here. You ought to do something in this neighborhood. Don't send it to me. You guys do it there in the town. And I want to keep on doing that. I want to keep on doing that. And I want to spend the rest of my life doing that and then passing the vision on to the young leaders down there in, in Jackson. Well, this is the poem, Bridge Builders. An old, old man going a long highway came at the evening cold and gray to a chasm vast, deep, and wide. The old man crossed in the twilight dim. The shuddering stream had no fear for him, but he turned when safely on the other side and built a bridge to span the tide. Old man said a pilgrim near, you are wasting your strength building here. Your journey will end at the end of the day. You will never again pass this way. You've crossed the chasm deep and wide. Why build this bridge at evening tide? The builder lifted his old gray head, 
Good friend, in the past I've come, he said, there fall after me today a youngsters whose feet must pass this way. This chasm have been as naught to me, to that fair-headed youth a pitfall be. He too must cross in the twilight dim. Good friend, I'm building this bridge for him. That's what we need to be doing. God has blessed us. God has blessed CCDA. We can now come together and rejoice. Our skills are being sharpened. We can reach out and we wanna, we're gonna multiply. We're gonna multiply. And next year in Dallas, there'll be 4,000 of us. We're gathered there. Thank God for the over 2,500 that have gathered this week. And many of these people here from New York have gathered. Thank God for you. And so we're on the move. We had, a, we, we had a pivot time in history. God has brought us to the kingdom for such a time as this. And what we need to do is to continue to develop, continue to build, but then we need to talk about how can we pass this vision on? How can we put this in our daycare center? How can we put this in our neighborhood schools, Christian schools? And how can we then influence the public schools so that we can really build on what we've accomplished here. Most of us, we lose, we get connected from the past. We want to stay. Let me close by saying this. This is my last quote. And this is my, what it means to be successful. You know, I feel very, very successful. Uh, let me define for you success. Success to me is defined by Henry Ford, listen to what Henry Ford says about success. Success, Henry Ford says, coming together to do something is the beginning. He says, working together is progress, but staying together is success. We've been together now for 12 years. Let's commit ourselves. Let's commit ourselves to another 12 years so we can have something creatively to pass on to the next generation. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this evening. And Lord, I thank you so much for all of these wonderful, wonderful friends that you've given and how you've brought us together and how you've caused us to love each other, to depend on each other, to fellowship together, to work together, to be your people. And most of all, Lord, we pray that we will know the difference between just doing programs and in building people. That we can build creative and good programs and good social services. But Lord, help us to be able to make that clear witness in a way that people can come to know you. They can give their life to you. They can be born again. They can be saved. And then, Lord, we can get them into your word where they can grow and where they can give their life back to you and back to the community. That they don't live into themselves anymore, but they can live for your glory and for your honor. And that we, CCDA people, can have a legend that we can pass on to the next generation. We ask all this in Jesus' precious name and for his sake. Amen.